Hello and welcome. We are here at Public Media Network. For tonight's show, we will have our special guest from Kalamazoo, Ken, County Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention Council, a local nonprofit here in Kalamazoo. Please stick around. We will be right back. Hello, my name is Svetlana Stone. You're watching Spotlight in Azul. Thank you for being here with us tonight. We are pleased to have Sarah Joshi, Executive Director from Kalamazoo Ken, here tonight to talk about how their organization help prevent child abuse before it happens. Uh, thank you for being here with us tonight. Uh, Sarah, how was your day? Really great, thanks. And thanks for having me, Svetlana. It's a pleasure to be here with you. That's wonderful. We are happy to have you here. Uh, would you please uh, share with our viewers about your background and how you become involved with Kalamazoo Ken? Well, I have years of nonprofit leadership experience, and this is my first foray into the world of child abuse or human services at all. Uh, but what I've learned is that child abuse affects one child in 10 in our community. That's a national statistic, but there's every reason to believe that it holds true right here in Kalamazoo County as well. And so it's been really gratifying to be able to work on this problem and try to prevent child abuse. That's wonderful. Uh, would you please uh, share um, what is uh, specifically your organization do to prevent child abuse? We have three important programs. The first being our body safety program. It's called Kids Are Special, and it teaches young children ages 3 to 10 how to spot tricky people, what to do if someone is touching them inappropriately or treating them poorly, and how to report that to a trusted adult. And then we also have mandated reporter training so that when they do report their abuse to a teacher or a pastor or social worker or policeman, educator, that way the, those people know what to do and what will and won't happen as a result of their report. Then we also publish the very popular family help book. I have a copy with me right here. A lot of your viewers will probably uh, recognize that. We publish this and it's a very comprehensive directory of local resources that's very helpful for families uh, experiencing some kind of crisis. That's wonderful. You mentioned that your programs are working with children. How do you communicate with them so they would understand what really happened? And you mentioned they are, their range is from 3 to 10. Exactly. Do you have uh, specific methods? Exactly. We have a 20-minute presentation that we take into all the head starts and into the elementary schools. And we use puppets and music, and we send them home with a coloring book to help them understand where their private parts are and what to do if someone is inappropriately touching their private parts. That's, that's wonderful. And it's important for our viewers to understand the why aspects. Uh, what motivates you uh, to do this type of work? Well, it's really important. Child abuse in itself is terrible, but the long-term effects just have such, such far-reaching results in people's lives and for society as a whole. Child abuse can lead to some really poor outcomes like poor graduation rates, increased substance abuse and addiction, increased obesity and diabetes, uh, increases in all kinds of um, uh, depression, suicide attempts, a lot of really bad outcomes. So if we can just get ahead of this problem and prevent it before it starts, we're going to have a much healthier and happier Kalamazoo County in 10 and 20 and 50 and 100 years. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, as you mentioned that it's um, child abuse could be a long-term effect on children. Um, how you, when you, do you work with educators? Or do they know that, that this child abuse can affect kids in their future? Certainly, there's some important research that was started about 25 years ago, and that's gaining a lot of traction in the whole community that works with children. It's called the ACEs study, and it just talks about how all kinds of poor uh, conditions in childhood set you up for really, really poor outcomes later in life. That's, that's interesting to, to learn for our viewers. And um, does your organization have a strong volunteer base? If so, how would uh, can get one involved? 
oh, we love our volunteers. We have such wonderful volunteers. Uh, for one thing, in April, they stand on street corners with their, oh, I should say, in front of predetermined businesses with blue cans, wearing their blue aprons, collecting spare change, uh, and that helps fund us. Uh, it provides a lot more revenue than you might expect. And so when the people come by and put their spare change in the blue cans, they're given a lifesaver mint. We call it our Be a Lifesaver campaign, and it has a special tag with some facts about child abuse, and most importantly, the number for reporting suspicions of child abuse and neglect. That number is 855-444-3911. And if I leave you with nothing else, I just want your viewers to know that number. That's a very important number, and thank you for sharing. Um, how can people um, connect with Kalamazoo Can and um, what the community can do to support your mission? Well, we would not be here without community support. I always say child abuse is a community problem and it's going to take a community to solve it. So people can intersect with us on our website, KalamazooCan.org. That's Kalamazoo all spelled out, C-A-N.org, and that stands for Child Abuse and Neglect. So what they can do on our website is sign up to help with our Be a Lifesaver campaign and take a two hour shift with a blue can in front of one of the stores that we have permission from and just collect change for us. And that is enormously helpful. They can also fill out a special uh, contact us form. So if there's something else that they're willing to do for us, office help or helping out with the superhero fun run in the fall, that would be very appreciated as well. And it's not too early to sign up for the superhero fun run. That'll be September 29th. So the sign up is live right now at runsignup.com. And that's a wonderful event. Um, thank you for being here with us tonight. Uh, we will learn more about Kalamazoo Ken uh, right after the short break. Please stick around. We will be right back. My name is Aaliyah Ward, and today I will be sharing with you the untold story of Florence Price. Florence Price was born on April 9, 1887 in Little Rock, Kansas. She would grow up to be the first African American woman to become a classical composer. She began taking lessons from her mother, a piano teacher, and played her first performance at age four. Her first composition was published at age 11. When she went into college, she pretended to be a Mexican to avoid racism towards her. She was o when she was older, she entered a competition along with her friend and won the first place prize for $500, which is $9,589 today. She was also the first to have her composition played by WPA Symphony, Symphony Orchestra of Detroit, Chicago, a woman's symphony. Some of her compositions included Cotton Dance, the, the, the Desert, the, the Deserted Garden, and Hold Fast to Dreams, inspired by Langston Hughes. Florence Prince Price died on June 3rd, 1953. This is the conclusion of the untold story of Florence Price. Oprah Winfrey is a media executive, actress, talk show host, television producer, and philanthropist. All the success did not come easy. Oprah was born January 29, 1954, and by no means had a lavish life. By 14, she had given birth to her son, who died as an infant. She then moved to Tennessee at 19 and was co-anchor for the local evening news. She eventually transferred to daytime talk show. After boosting the third rated local Chicago show to first, she launched her own production company and became internationally recognized. Dubbed the queen of all media, she revolu revolutionized the talk show genre, and in 1994, she was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. She is the richest African American in the, of the 20th century and North America's first black multi-billionaire. She is chairwoman and CEO of Harpo Productions and the chairwoman, CEO, and CCO of 
the Oprah Winfrey Network. This has been a Black History Month moment with the Merced State Explorers. Welcome back to Spotlight in a Zoo. For those of you who just tuned in, we are here at Public Media Network with Sarah Joshi from Kalamazoo, Ken. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for coming. And um, we would like to learn more about uh, your organization and how child abuse can be prevented before it happens. Uh, could you please tell us about the impact your programs uh, are having uh, in the community? Absolutely. Uh, Community-wide, of course, it's a little bit hard to uh, measure prevention, but I can tell you that this has been professionally evaluated, and when the students take a pretest and a post-test, the message really resonates with children. They understand the message. It really hits home. They understand that if someone is interfering with them, that they need to speak up. So it's really, really gratifying to know that children know to take action. They don't just freeze. And this is a very important uh, job that you're doing uh, for the community. Um, whom does your organization serve? And um, do you have any story to share that have been meaningful for you? Of course. Well, we serve mostly the schools in the area. Um, and the teachers are very, very grateful for us coming in and giving this presentation because we find that many times teachers don't graduate prepared to discuss these things. They do their best. but. It's a difficult topic, and it really takes somebody who has uh, given a lot of thought and a lot of attention and really has made that their specialty. So we're proud to be able to do that at KCAN. Um, and one of my favorite stories is about a little boy who disclosed some abuse to the educator when she was in his classroom giving, his, uh, giving the presentation. And when she saw him again the following year, he had a whole new family and he was doing much better. Because he had disclosed abuse to her, and she is a mandated reporter under the law, she was required to report that to the child abuse and neglect phone number. And as a result, an investigation showed that being removed from the home was the best thing for that child. And so it's just so heartwarming to know that we do have an impact. We, we do have that, even though we don't know all the time, all the stories about the ways we're having impact. It's really heartwarming to know that there are instances like that, so it keeps us going. That's that's wonderful, wonderful to learn uh, that you have such impact on our community. And do you have any uh, plans for growth? And uh, what type of events you will have in 2019? We have big plans for growth. Right now, our mandated reporter education program is undergoing a. a whole new marketing makeover. We're making it available systematically to more mandated reporters throughout the county, and I couldn't be happier about that. We've got a really, really high-functioning work group uh, who's working on spreading the message about that program. The other thing we're doing with the Kids Are Special program in the schools is turning a corner with the model, and instead of us employing the educator, we're going to be in a position to support school social workers and behavior specialists as they learn to give the program with our full support and so we'll be able to reach so many more children that way with the same number of dollars. It's really important to us to maximize our budget and reach as many children as possible. That's wonderful that you reach more people to bring this important message. Um, what obstacles do you foresee and uh, what obstacles have you overcome so far? I would say fundraising is always the obstacle. That is always the big hurdle for any nonprofit. And so uh, we do have some important funders. Uh, Children's Trust Fund is good to us, as is the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation. Also, Allegra Print and Imaging here in town, very, very supportive. So we're grateful for our community partners, uh, but it takes a lot of individual donations as well. So if people can help with uh, the Be a Lifesaver campaign coming up, if people can help by sponsoring one of our Blue Pinfield Gardens, that's very helpful. And of course, running in the Superhero Fun Run is a, a wonderful way that the community can get involved and help support us financially. And why is the superhero? Why do you name this superhero? Is there any idea behind? I'm just sure. curious to learn about this. It sounds very awesome, superhero. Sure, we say be a hero for local kids. 
and that's what it is. When you pay your registration fee, and it is a very low registration fee, when you pay that fee, it goes right directly to KCAN. All the dollars stay local, and we're able to turn those into programs that help keep local kids safe. That's wonderful. Uh, do you collaborate with anyone, and how do you reach people, organization who need you, who need your help and information that you're sharing? We try to collaborate with all kinds of local organizations, and part of my job is to just reach out to different organizations that may be like-minded, that may work with children, or have some kind of intersection with our mission. And that's really important to me, to let people know that child abuse is a problem in our community. There is an organization here working on it, and if there are ways that make sense for us to partner with other organizations, we are always open to that. So I have a lot of fun meeting my peers at various organizations throughout the community and having them help us out as we try to help them out. That's wonderful. To recap, could you please remind to our viewers why it is important to prevent child abuse before it happens? Well, the effects of child abuse, unfortunately, are long-lasting. Childhood trauma leads to all kinds of poor life and health outcomes for its victims. And that ranges from everything from depression and suicide to uh, poor, poor health in terms of even cancer and heart disease. It can lead to um, uh, unintended pregnancies and addictions and all kinds of things that are not only harmful to, for the individual but also cost society a lot in terms of lost productivity and, um, and the money that we have to spend to address those problems. And so it's really, really important if we can just get ahead of this, it's going to be a healthier, better functioning community. That's wonderful. I think it's important to people know why it's important to um, educate our, our teachers and children so we can prevent in the future and how it's affect uh, our children. Um, that's that's important mission. Thank you, Sarah, for being here with us tonight. I, I really enjoyed this time to learn about you and about your organization. If there's anything else uh, you would like to share with our viewers that we might miss. Absolutely. I think the most important thing for everyone to take away is that phone number for reporting suspicions of child abuse or neglect. It's 855 444-3911. And everybody should keep that in their phone or in their wallet because you never know when you're going to see a concern. And the important thing is you don't need to know the whole story. Just have a concern. Call it in. Let the experts figure it out. That's wonderful. Well, this concludes this month's edition of Spotlight and a Zoo. If you want to know more about Kalamazoo Can, please check this information below. In addition, if you know someone or would like to be on our show, please contact to Public Media Network. And thank you for being here with us tonight. See you next time.